there's a man, a former Marine. He disarms an individual, doesn't kill them like the police would have. Disarms a person. Police come, they lock up the veteran, okay? He's the good guy here. Let's put his picture up for a mask. Yeah, you guessed correctly. Lloyd Muldrow, all right? Mr. Muldrow is a good person. He did the right thing. Disarmed somebody without the need to kill them. Let me give you the background on this miscarriage of justice. According to the Washington Times, 57-year-old Lloyd Muldrow was meeting with friends at the Tequila Sunset Bar on July 4th. When a fight broke out, okay, people fight, it's a bar. Patrons Wesley Henderson and Marshall Cullens got into a fight. Henderson reportedly became upset when an ex-girlfriend began dancing with Cullens. So that is the genesis of the fight. According to the ex-Marine, the former Marine, Mr. Muldrow, Henderson brandished a firearm, took out a gun, and said, and I quote, I kill everyone. Well, obviously everybody got scared, except for this ex-Marine. Henderson reportedly hit Collins several times with the gun. Collins was bleeding profusely. Mardro, who served in the Marine Corps Security Force Regiment, reacted by knocking Henderson to the ground and holding him down until the police arrived. When I got there, I saw him, Collins, bleeding profusely from his head. It looked like he had a gunshot wound to his forehead, said the former Marine. I have taught Marines hand-to-hand combat for many years, added Muldrow. I have disarmed several enemies, he goes on to say, as well as IEDs, which are improvised explosive devices. My natural reaction was to do as I was trained for my country. The police arrived and did not find Henderson's weapon, despite the witnesses confirming the man had brandished a gun, that he had a weapon. However, the former Marine, Mr. Muldrow, was armed with a registered 22 caliber Beretta M9. He had it in his holster, on his hip. While several police officers reportedly thanked him for stopping the altercation, a supervisor came. So keep in mind, nobody has arrested Mr. Muldrow. They thanked him. We appreciate what you did here. You probably saved lives. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your service to the country and to the citizens today. Then a supervisor comes. Supervisor comes, he decided to arrest Mr. Muldrow. He ordered his officers to lock him up and charge him with a weapons violation and aggravated assault. Do you hear me? A weapons violation and aggravated assault. He assaulted nobody. Every witness said, no, this man saved our lives. Why are you arresting him? All right, at question is this. The cops could not find the firearm. Let me go ahead and help everybody peep game because obviously the police don't know what happened. There was a gun. He brandished the gun, and I believe he said exactly what all the witnesses say he said. When the fight broke out and Mr. Maldro was able to disarm the man, that man had somebody in the restaurant that had his back, and he hid the gun for him. That's all that happened. It's nothing more. Every witness said they saw the gun. They are not connected to Mr. Muldrow. They do not know the former Marine. They have no reason to lie to, uh, lie to the police for him. Muldrow's attorney, Michael Stark, noted that guns disappear after an altercation in Baltimore. That's a common occurrence. You hear police say it's a pretty common occurrence in Baltimore that by the time they get there, the gun has disappeared. And that's what happened in this case, Stark said. It is legal, it is legal, completely legal, to carry a concealed weapon in Maryland. But the state does not recognize permits issued in other states. So this ex-Marine, this former Marine, faces a $1,000 fine and could serve up to one year in prison for being a good Samaritan. Mr. Mardro works as a security specialist and holds a concealed weapons permit in Virginia, which he could lose if convicted. He said, and I quote, 
I'm not going to settle with probation or anything like that. I don't think it's fair, he said. And I don't think it's fair what they're doing to you either, brother. Um, all he's asking them to do is treat him like a white man who had a gun. That's all he's asking. All right, Senator, thoughts here. The supervisor went the opposite direction of what they were supposed to do when they got on the scene. And Mr. Muldrow certainly does not deserve this at all. And I hope that he does receive justice and he should be thanked for diffusing a situation that could have been really ugly at that bar. When you mix alcohol with guns, it is not a good situation. So just thank Mr. Muldrow for what he did. And that supervisor, I'm, I'm shaking my head, Doc, the opposite yeah. direction. You Usually supervisors come on the scene and get everything where they're supposed That's right. to. Let me not say usually. That, that, exactly. Uh, the they're, they're supposed yeah. to be the reasonable, the more reasonable ones on That's the scene, right. typically, right? Uh, we're going to continue Absolutely. to follow this story, but what we see is an unequal application of law. That's what we're saying. I guarantee you, if this would have been another individual, his story would have been believed. He corroborated what the witnesses said, and they were going to let the fact that he had a gun that was registered in another state slide that may have sent him a ticket in the mail, and that would have been it.